There he is, 13th, yeah, number 30, Jamie Goon, and number 98, uh, Oliver Cotton, who went well yesterday, finished in fifth place, uh, despite uh, problems with his transponder, so uh, not a, a driving penalty imposed. Number 30, number 98, row 5. Row 6, 58, Harvey Dent, and 28, Louis Hansel. 58 and 28, row 6, the seventh row, 46, Harry Hickton. And 260, 260, James Wallace, 46 and 260, row 7. Row 8, we have number 80, Aaron Walker, and 63, Chloe Grant, 80 and 63, row 8. The ninth row, 9, Jack Ruddle, and 22, Ashley Gregory, 9 and 22, row 9. Row 10, 77, Travis Chapman, and 16, Jacob Heap. 77 and 16, row 10, uh, Travis Chapman having a two-place grid penalty for misdemeanor in race one, in the, yesterday's race, in other words, dropped a couple of places, and beside him is 16, Jacob Heap, as I say, that's row 10. Row 11, number 23, Arwen Graham, and 19, Reese Blakely, 23 and 19, row 11. Row 12, Row 12, number 59, C.J. Morgan, and 57, Ben Carter. 59 and 57, row 12. Row 13 is 322, Jamie Petters, and 17, Wiley Right, Hurley, welcome down to the Assembly area. It's almost time for the second yeah. Junior Saloon Car Championship race of the weekend. It's a triple header this weekend. Charlie Hand, you may remember yesterday, getting the job done, and he's going very well indeed. We've got James Wallace up here. Let's grab a quick word with James. James, yesterday, first of all, how did it go for you? Not too great to be honest, had an unfortunate collision caused by myself, um, I apologise to all the drivers I came in contact with but I t I'll take the blame for that. But the important thing is you're out now, Yeah, I'm getting out, ready yeah. for race two, how are you feeling, are you ready for this? Uh, yeah I'm ready, I think we can try and make up a few positions, keep it clean and just work my way up the field as far as I can, yeah. so yeah, should be a good one. It's motorsport, it's yeah. racing, these things happen yeah, don't they? Is, Best yeah. of luck for, for race two, yeah. we uh, certainly have to be watching this let's just move ourselves down a little bit wanted to grab a word with uh, ashley gregory up here as well there's chloe grant in scholarship we spoke to chloe yesterday uh, let's grab a quick word uh, Ash ashley quick word if we can <laughs> it's good to see you again uh, yesterday how did it go for you uh, we had a good start started from 20th on the grid due to a problem in qualifying worked my way up to 11th and then got tackled up there we finished in 22nd, but new day today. But you've got the pace, yeah, you know got that. You've got the pace yeah. and the plan of action, just go that way, right? Yeah, stay in the right direction and work through the park. Fantastic, yeah. best of luck for no it. Worries, we will be watching, of course. Let's keep going down as well. Uh, we've got Mr. Heap over here. Let's grab a quick word of him, see how he's feeling ahead of this one. Ready, feeling confident up for this? Yeah, definitely, especially after yesterday. Yes. Went yep. from uh, 18th to 7th in the race. So, uh, so yeah, I think we've got the pace just to get up the field. So how far do you think you can get then? You're clearly a quick driver, we know that. You've got pace in the car. Just how far that end can you go? I think I can get in the top ten. Yeah. Got the pace, just need to watch out for incidents on the, on the start. Just yeah. keep out of trouble. Exactly. The track, probably quite dry now, do we think? There's been a yeah. bit of action going. Yeah, the track's uh, had quite a bit of action on this morning, so yeah, should have a dry line. Fantastic. Well, look, best of luck for the race. We'll be watching. Enjoy it, won't you? Thank there you. Go. Right, it is now time for the Junior Saloon Car Championship. Race two to get underway. Remember, it's a triple header here at Silverstone. This is going to be an absolute cracker. And Beckett, which involved also Jack Meakin and James Wallace as well. Now, they were two by two on the way in. I was looking back at the footage with him last night. They were two by two on the way in. Um, Redford next to Wallace, and then Meakin was side by side with somebody else in front. I forget who it was. But um, Jack backed out of it to let the other car through, but then Wallace threw his car down the inside, and there were three wide on the way in. Jack Meakin didn't realise there were three wide in time, unfortunately, and turned in, which squashed Wallace into the side of Will Redford. They've all got turned sideways, and there was a lot of contact. And then in recovering, Will was then turned around further down the order by Mr... Well, where's he gone? I was just looking down the list there, I'm afraid. I've, uh, I've lost it. But he was, uh, there, was, there was contact, basically, between himself 
and Mr. Gillum a little bit further Tommy, down. Tommy, Tommy Gillum. Yes, Tommy Gillum. That was the reason. I said yesterday Tommy Gillum's car had no front bumper on it. Yeah. Um, that was the reason why. Um, the two of them side by side going in. I think potentially even three wide with the third car in there as well. There was contact which took the bumper off that car. And <laughs> funnily enough, actually, on my walk through the pit lane this morning, I saw what was left of that bumper in a skip. <laughs> So well, it's got a bright pink bumper on it this morning, I think. So one of those involved, I think you said, was 260, James Wallace. Yeah? Yes, yeah, the bright yellow and black car. Well, he got a penalty for that. The other one, uh, number 77, Travis Chapman, got to get a penalty. Uh, I'm not sure which part Travis was involved in. but Well, maybe it was a different incident. Yeah. But anyway, uh, it sounds like James Wallace started it all. It was decided by the officials that he started it all. Yeah, he did, he did fly up the inside. It was a very opportunistic move. It was great, yeah. but unfortunately there was a bit of a squeeze to the right to try and make sure that he covered off uh, Will while trying to overtake Jack and, yeah, all constantly together. I think we're missing one. I think we're missing Arwen Graham. So we've got back Matthew Cripps, but I don't think she is on uh, intended grid slot on the 11th ah. row. Um, I'll check them again, but they're coming up multicolored. Saxos. It is a very bright and colourful grid. It's it is, is, yes. Uh, so we're just looking for 23. She should be on row 11. That wasn't the um, metallic sort of pink car, was it? That's Seal Lynch, I think, in car 7. Because I was thinking uh, Seal had an issue down here at Beckett's yesterday, but I think that was the only drama that they had in that car. Well, the back of the grid forming up. And behind should be 59. CG, CJ Morgan, he's there for Simbin Carter. Yes, uh, so we're missing 23 Arwen Graham for whatever reason, unless she's going to start from the pit lane. So yesterday they got in 11 laps. That's 10 plus the one, t 10 laps in uh, 15 minutes plus a lap. So drivers all now looking on the gantry, the lights come on, the lights go out and off they head towards Cobb's Corner. Charlie Hand on the left-hand side of the road, so Ruben Hager on the inside might have the advantage as they go into Cobb's Corner for the first time. No, he doesn't. It's Charlie. Charlie's got the lead round the outside and uh, heads up towards Maggots and Beckett's in the lead for the first time, car 55. Yeah, Ruben Haig trying to stay with him though, but it's side by side between Ruben. Actually, Ruben's dropped down to fourth already. It's the number 54 of Caton that's gone through, but Ruben chucks it back down the inside. Redford and Gillum side by side as well. There is contact between Haig and Caton. Multiple cars running off wide and <laughs> all managing to come back on. But there's four of them right together. Tommy Gillum's pushing Caton down the straight, moves over onto the right-hand side now, and they're all being very aware of each other, but there's a great scrap for the lead going on as well between Hand, and I think the other car is Jeekins, is it not? OK, cars, there's, there's two, there's a breakaway movement by two. Everybody else is in third place, or trying to be, <laughs> yeah. as they come into Luffield then, the, the pack, uh, on mass, but already there's this break caused by that incident, presuming that you were this describing chance. So through goes 55, Charlie Hand, shadowed by Alfie Jeekins. They were first and second yesterday, they're first and second now, uh, and if they work sensibly together, rather than trying to win the race, and I think they probably will use their heads to uh, work together to pull away, they've had a two and a half second lead already. Uh, Hand has over third placed Will Redford who heads Oliver Cotton, who's come up nicely. Tommy Gillum is fifth, and sixth uh, is Harvey Caton. Yeah, there's a massive train of cars all battling for what looks like sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, and so on. Wallace doing his, uh, his trick that he did yesterday, chucking it up the inside of everybody else. Oh, there's a car off. Good has been clipped and has gone straight on, manages to recover. Everybody else carries on. The four wide, though, Wallace involved in that now down the straight. Not sure if he knows there's a car on the right-hand side or not, but they're rubbing doors as they come back towards you, Ian. Right, the, the two leaders then run side by side almost, so is uh, Alf, I, I would have thought they're savvy enough to know that it doesn't pay to battle out the uh, lead in what is really getting a slipstream mm. between the uh, cars behind. But uh, for the first two, work together. Charlie Hand and Alfie Jeekins, and they should 
uh, next the first two places in the race. Now, in third place, it is still Will Redford, so he's having a rather better opening to this race than he had yesterday. Oliver Cottam going very nicely in fourth place, number 98. Tommy Gillam, fifth. Sixth is 600, Ruben Haig, who started from the front row. Uh, he's moved ahead of 54, Harvey Caton. And behind him in eighth place, we've got number 91, Jack Meekin. Yeah, Jenkins is doing really well at staying with Charlie Ham now. Redford holding off everybody else, although Jenkins has gone very, very deep into Beckett. So many of them chucking it in. Ruben Haig flies up the inside of Tommy Gillam, gets the move done, although the two of them making contact on the exit. Dent has run a bit wide as well. Chapman also losing a place to Sumpton. Everybody else making it through cleanly, but, yeah, again, uh, Tommy Gillam certainly uh, making sure he uses the door handles on that saxo at this point. Which is not really to be encouraged. I mean, I'm afraid this is this is the trouble with this sort of racing, isn't it? It encourages mm. driving into each other, which goes on up through into touring cars. So, nose to tail, uh, Charlie Hand still leads just from Alfie Jenkins. These two aren't making contact with each other. Uh, looks to me as though Will Redford's beginning to break away uh, in third place. Yeah, 42 becoming isolated in third place. The two leaders side by side into Cops Corner, I think, going through on the inside and trying to take the lead out for Jenkins. No, he can't quite make it, so it is still Charlie Hand coming out of Cops Corner, heading up towards you for the fourth time. Caton's going well as well, did a purple sector two in that previous lap. So really on a mission in that pack of cars. But like you say, Redford's starting to break away a little bit in third position. And we have... The 98, the 54, Ruben Haig in there as well. Gillum's lost another place to Hounsell in the bright purple 28 car, although, to be fair, Hounsell's got a poor run out of Beckett, so we've got Gregory in the 22 going very wide, Hickton going through on him, and we've got Cripps down the inside of Ruddle for... What position is that? I think that's outside of the top 20. That's car 40 overtaking car 9. Uh, that's for 21st place. No, 22nd place, even. Right, the two leaders, still the orange one in front, still Charlie Hand leading. Alfie Jenkins has actually dropped back a few lengths. He's going to have to work quite hard to get back on turns, but he's not yet under threat from Will Redford behind. Still plenty of time left in this race. Will Redford in third place. Still has got a, a, a small cushion before the next car through, which is number 98, Oliver Cotton. And he has Harvey Caden right behind him. And the order unchanged, actually. He's 600, Ruben Haig. In sixth place, up to seventh, we've got number 28, Louis Hounsell, in her his first season of racing, and then eighth is number 91, Jack Meekin. Charlie Hand is starting to get away now for sure. Redford isn't quite leaving the gap behind, although sideways there. Cotton very sideways into Beckett, gets it turned in. Haig is challenging Caton for the next position. Gillum's lost another one actually to Meekin and Walker as well, so. He's unfortunately not having the uh, the smoothest of runs here. Blakely's getting past Chapman a bit further down. So all this moves all over the place here, and this is great stuff. Yeah, as long as they don't hit each other, that's yeah. the important thing. <laughs> yes. Because if you start off getting into bad habits like that in this class of racing, then uh, it just carries on up the, all, up the uh, categories. So the lead was set 0.717 of a second, first to second last time through it's certainly that possibly slightly more this time as they come through hand ahead of Alfie Jenkins at, but third place Will Redford has absolutely now been uh, caught by Oliver Cotton who's slip streaming past the bit of the gap first to second up a tenth 0.854 for second now Redford still third but Cotton pressing in strongly then Kate and then Haig then Hounsell, Walker is up to 8th, as you said, and Meekin both ahead of Tommy Gillam, who's dropped down to 10th. Hounsell fastest lap of the race last time round as well, a 113.997, the only and first car to get into the 113s, and Redford has been overtaken by Cotton. He's given him a push, she's given him a tap into Beckett's. Unbelievably sideways is Cotton. He's got all the lock on, tries to save it. Now Caton's down the inside, Haig's there too. They're three wide. Looks like Redford didn't want to back out of it, just gave him a little bit of a kiss. Uh -huh. And he's gone very, very sideways. Fantastic save, though. Cotton was sideways on the previous lap, so he knows exactly what to do through there. But they're three wide as they go back down towards Brooklands with two in tow. That's the problem. They say that it is not meant to be a contact sport. But mm. uh, anyway, Redford's been uh, displaced by Oliver Cotton, who uh, saved the moment from what you described. And uh, the, the two leaders out of Love Field, the next group of, what is it, four five cars running close six laps completed by the two leaders then 
Charlie Hand ahead of Alfie Jeekins by over a second now, 1.075. Third place, Will Redford's got it back. Uh, and Oliver Cotton, despite having a cup of the moment, he's been uh, elbowed down to seventh place. Harvey Kane's up to fourth and up to fifth, Louis Hounsell. Yeah, Hounsell's going really well at the moment. I'm not, <laughs> I really don't know how Redford's held on to third place in all of that because he, like I say, he just gave Cotton that tiny bit of a touch. There was still, there was a, a bit of an overlap on the way into the corner. And as they all slammed on the brakes, the noses of these cars really dive down. And the yeah. back end is quite high up, so it just lifted the rear wheels off the ground. Great save by Cotton, but now he's in that fight. And Redford is going to have to work hard. We've got Gillow and Pettis as well side by side further back. And the black and white uh, driving standards flag going out on track for track limit to, uh, to the leader. Oh, hey. So uh, Charlie Hand's got to be careful now. He's he's got his one second lead. Uh, he's not under any significant threat. Yes, he'd like to win. If he gets passed by the car behind him, he's not going to lose more than that second place. So he, he leads out of the field still, Charlie Hand. But now with oh, the Seal Lynch has gone very very far off into the gravel. Really overdid it on the way into Beckett's and has just gone completely straight on. Right, leaders uh, through in third place is uh, Will Redford. In fourth place is Harvey Caton. And then the order behind, I think, has remained pretty unchanged from the previous lap. Yes, Hounsell, Haig, Cotton, Meakin, Wallace and Gillam complete the top ten as they were on the previous lap. Eleventh is number 322, Petters. Now I'm going to come up well, Jamie Petters, from mm. the 13th row. Yeah, I'm going to see how this dilutes the race a second here, because we've got double-waved yellows down here. Seal Lynch has been pushed back onto the track, but I think Seal's probably going to wait for the field to go through now. So no overtaking on the way into Beckett's. There's a green flag on the exit, so once they get the run out of there, they'll be OK. Seal Lynch does come back on in the salmon-coloured number seven machine, and yellow flags are now brought in. So any moves further down the order doesn't look like it. Everybody's still abusing track limits over here. They're just pushing hard on the exit and just running over the white line. It's great to watch. Yeah, well, presumably that's not one of the areas that's being policed mm. uh, so they can get away with it. So we've now we've got five minutes and the lap uh, remaining as coming through to complete his eighth lap is Charlie Hand with Alfie Jenkins shadowing him. He's got the gap down to just below a second now, 0.847 of a second. The next two, Redford and Caton, have uh, broken away from the pack. Hounsell, Hay, Cotton, Meakin, Gillum up to ninth now ahead of Petters. And the one who's dropped down a couple of places actually is uh, down to 11th place, number 260, James Wallace. Now 11th ahead of number 58, Harvey Dent. And car 10 has picked up a five-second penalty, so uh, that's for track limits offences. We don't get everything put up it. Now, uh, Harry Smith, uh, who is in 28th place out of the 29 cars circulating anyway, but he's now got a five-second penalty. Yeah, these, uh, these drivers, though, all out to prove a point, which is one of the, uh, the sort of things that brings the entertainment with this championship, I suppose. I remember the very first time I commentated in my life on a real world event being these guys at Old Park and they were just as exciting then. A much smaller grid though, the grid has yes, grown massively has. in this, it's brilliant. Yeah. Yes, the, uh, but it, it is driver discipline that needs to be looked at. Charlie yes. Hand goes through, nine laps completed, three and three quarter minutes to go. And Redford and Caton go through nearly side by side in third place. It's still that order though, Redford's still just ahead of Caton as they go one behind the other through Cops Corner onto their 10th lap. We're going to get more laps out of this race than we did yesterday. Yeah, indeed. Charlie Han, though, yeah, great gap over Jenkins at the moment. The battle for third is the one to watch, though, Caton all over the back of Redford as they get into Beckett. Redford takes a bit of an earlier apex, runs a little bit further wide, and Caton gets the run off the corner. Not sure what he's going to have slipstream-wise down there. Ruben Haig right behind Hounsell as well, who has gone very, very well in this race. And the, the other driver that we said had gone well, who was it? Was it Cotton that's come up the order quite a lot? Well, he had, but he's dropped back again. So yeah. he's now seventh. He started, Oliver Cotton started on row five, tenth. Mm. So the leader's going through Nuffield. I'm just thinking that if uh, Charlie Han does pick up a five-second penalty for track exceeding track limits once too often, he still only dropped to second place because he's yeah. five point six seconds clear of Will Redford in third place. He goes through now for the tenth time. 
and he's going to be battling with uh, with Caton as well as Redford, so that gap might get yeah. even bigger, to be fair. In fifth place, uh, it's 28 Hounsel, isn't it, in the purple car, yes, Hounsel, Hay, Cotton, Meakin, Gillam and Petters complete the top 10. Dent is up to 11th now, number 58, Harvey Dent, up ahead of the fading a little James Wallace, down to 12th place, number 260. Lost quite a few places over the last few laps, last two or three laps. Redford still under pressure from Caton as they come into Beckett. The two of them doing their usual. Redford takes a bit of an earlier apex. Caton takes the later one, aiming on getting the run on the exit. Looks like he's got him there, but Redford uses the outside of the circuit, really hangs the car out wide to get through there. Petters and Gillam having a great scrap further down the order in ninth and tenth place. Gillam just slotting in in front of him now as they go down the straight. Petters just a little bit wider through Beckett's. But great racing between those two. So the lead that uh, Charlie Hand has, it's gone up to a couple of laps ago, went up to over 1.3 seconds. It stayed that way. Well, it, this time they're coming out of Luffield. The fight for third place is becoming more intense, whereas the battle for the lead that we had in the early stages has now really fizzled out, and it's Charlie Hand's race going away, as they say. 1.3, 1.313 is the gaps. Third and fourth, I think, at... Uh, Harvey Cates practicing for a final dash for the line on the last lap because he's certainly drawing level or trying to get level with Redford as they come out of Woodcut and go over the timing line. But they're not catching the leaders. The uh, leader, 1.3 seconds clear, back with you, Chaz. Yeah, and it's still over five seconds as well for Charlie Hand, so he'll at least hold on to second place. Jeekins in a good position now to take the race win. Not the way he would have wanted to do it, but still, he's put in a fantastic drive so far. The rest of them inside the top 10 except for Petters and Gillam who are doing a repeat of what they did on the previous lap just the other way around have all sort of spread out a little bit really yeah Charlie Hand hasn't got the penalty yet I oh was, uh... sorry we've got a big big hit here number 59 Morgan chucks it down the inside of Gregory I don't think Gregory knew he was there he just turned in on him and the two of them have gone very sideways Morgan has saved it but the car's flicked the other way and he's gone off at Beckett's he's back on though he's just looped it around onto a bit of the, uh, the Grand Prix circuit and come back on Right, now we're coming up to the countdown, seven seconds, six seconds, five seconds. Is that the last lap board going out? I'm not sure that it is actually, or is it? So anyway, they got across the line just before the 15 minutes was up, but this may prove to be the last lap, because remember it's 50 minutes plus a lap, so we'll have to wait and see. But Yeah, it says one lap to go on TSL, it's just changed, so I think this will be it. So hand to Jeekins is up to the biggest it's been since the start of the race, actually, 1.5 seconds. Uh, and then Redford is 5.8 seconds. But yes, hand has not got a penalty. I was simply surmising if he got one. Uh, ah, apologies. It, <laughs> yeah, uh, if he got one, he'd still be safe yeah. from uh, anybody except second place Jeekins. So uh, uh, Charlie Hand leads uh, and Every Alfie Jeekins is second place. Um, but not going to catch him now. No, everybody keeping it nice and tidy through Beckett's this time round. No contact, no real sort of abuse of track limits. There's a few cars just going slightly over the white line on the exit, but nothing uh, too much. Well, there's one, two, three, four, five cars have just been given the black and white flag for oh. not respecting track limits. <laughs> so I'm afraid it's a fairly ill-disciplined race in various places. There's an awful lot of contact, uh, and it's disappointing that uh, not many steps will be taken. Anyway, the checker flag has not gone out. Oh, okay. So uh, they're now onto their last lap. As I say, I thought it was a couple of seconds still in hand. Ho ho! Charlie Hand then leads onto the 14th lap uh, by now 2.4 seconds. Redford, Caton, Hounsell, Haig, Cotton, Meakin, Gillam, and Petters are the top 10. So there's a bit of shuffling at the bottom end of the top 10, but basically the order is the same as it has been for several laps, really. Yeah, it's sort of settled down a little bit now. Drivers just trying to make sure they chip off that one final position before the end of the race. Caton's got a good run on Redford out of Beckett's. That'll be intriguing as they get back down towards you, Ian. But like you say, everybody else staying pretty stationary. There's a train of five cars a little bit further down the order that were having a really good scrap that involved, I think, three out of the five that got a, uh, a black and white flag for track limits, unfortunately. But everyone's still behaving themselves at this end relatively. Right, the leader... Not far off lapping Harry Smith, actually, but Harry's got a penalty anyway, so he should worry. He'll get through onto another lap as the leader comes into Woodcote for the final time. So Charlie Hand takes his second win of the weekend in the Junior Saloon Car Championship. 
in second place, the driver was second yesterday, Alfie Jenkins in car 754 and 42 Will Redford for the moment is classified in third place ahead of Harvey Caton. In fifth place is number 28 Louis Hansel who progressed from being on the sixth row, so that's a good race for him. Uh, in sixth place, number 600, seems to be in sixth place, whatever was happening ahead or behind him, he was always sixth, number 600. Uh, Ruben Haig, who started off on the front row. In seventh place, number 98, Oliver Cotton. In eighth place, number 91, Jack Meakin. In ninth place, number 34, Tommy Gillam. And lower down the order, cars finishing the race side by side, rather like they started it, off the grid side by side. Uh, but that was at the bottom end of the top 20. Uh, so in ninth place, Tommy Gillam. In tenth place, number 322. Uh, Jamie Petters, one of the, he, he started on row 13, so good drive by him to get into the top 10, finish in 10th place. 11th, uh, number 58, Harvey Dent. And in 12th place, number 260, James Wallace. In 13th place, number 29, that was Sumpton, Scott Sumpton faded rather he started on row, row four uh, and in 14th place number 80 Aaron Walker in 15th place number 19 Reese Blakely that's the top 15 finishers fastest lap went to number 28 Louis Hounsel at 113.997 which compares with yesterday's fastest lap but uh, Charlie Hand of 113.957 so not much difference in the fastest lap performance no, really uh, consistent pace by a lot of the drivers in that one as well, to be fair. But still, you know, entertaining racing with lots going on, which is uh, what we often ask for. It's just down here into Beckett's. Those cars really do dive onto the brakes. There's very little uh, little weight over the rear end. And naturally, these cars with torsion beam rear suspension, they sort of sit with the front quite low to the ground and the rear end quite high up with a lot of rake anyway. So there was a, uh, a lot of movement on the brakes down here. Well, yeah, the, maybe... Uh, entertainment is a secondary consideration. This is about encouraging young drivers to uh, know how to drive and race. And if it spills over, as this sort of driving does, and driving at con contact is what happens in the British Touring Car Championship, which doesn't make people very happy. Yeah, indeed, indeed. So that is the All right, everybody, welcome down to Park Fermé. Another superb exhibition from the Junior Saloon Car Championship drivers. This man over here, Charlie Hand, he's on for the perfect weekend, isn't he? That's two race wins so far. Let's grab a quick word with him. He's surely going to be a happy man indeed, isn't he, Charlie? I was just saying, you're on for the perfect weekend at the minute. Oh, don't say that. You're going to jinx me. <laughs> no, no, no. Don't, don't worry about me. This is all about you. You've got the talent. You've got the skill. You must be delighted, right? Oh yeah, I'm so happy with that. Obviously, um, uh, there's a massive headwind down the down the, the hangar straight. So uh, really, because these cars are quite straight, sorry, quite light, and they're pushing yeah. you around a bit, are they? Oh yeah, so I can I can see Alfie catching me behind us. So I had quite a bit of pressure from him in the first half, and then I just got a really good exit through Luffield and just managed to break that toe, and then it was yeah. Well, look, congratulations. One more race to go, but you're yeah. doing well. There we go. And uh, talking of this man, Alfie, uh, Alfie, just, you wouldn't let him get away, would you? Uh, it was close at the beginning, <laughs> but I, I tried taking a different line to try and get a run on him. And, uh, it didn't work, and I lost his toe, and then it was his own race from there, really. Race three. You're going to get him? Hopefully. We'll try. Great. Well done, mate. Congratulations. Let's grab a quick word with this man over here, Will Redford. Will. Well, congratulations, buddy. You must be delighted with that on the oh, podium. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Nobody, uh, nobody was letting you get away. That was high pressure all the way around, wasn't it? How did you deal with the pressure from um, trying to catch Alfie in behind as well? Yeah, Caton uh, was, you know, he was behind me. He was putting pressure on the whole race. But really, I was, you know, it's, this track's really hard to pass on. So I was just keeping up to the inside down like the one point where you can yeah. chuck it up my inside or my outside. And he never really went for the outside. So sort of just came like, I'm, I'm, I would have liked to catch the cars in front, 
but obviously I'm happy with P3 as a rookie. Exactly, so. exactly. And look, don't give any tips away for race three. He won't listen to this that way. Well done, Will. Congratulations. Thank Great you. stuff. Uh, that's not it from the junior saloons. We do have another race a little bit later to bring you as well. There's still so much action to happen here today at Silverstone. I don't know if you just heard that in the background. A few uh, cheers going on in the background now. This is what motorsport is all about. Remember, these drivers, they're teenagers. They are teenagers. Unbelievable stuff. Uh, we've still got a lot of action to bring you. Uh, I'm going to head off for a bit, but we will be back with on-track action very soon. Thank you.